The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Once again, it's a beautiful sunny day. Um, even though we're in winter, we are having an unseasonable amount of glorious sunshine. We're actually in the state where we need some rain. Welcome to all of you and thank you so much for attending. I trust you've all had a fabulous day. Um, I know I've started mine off well. I've just done my walk with my gorgeous little companion puppy, Honey. And it was cold because I lost feeling in my toes, which was, oh joy, lost feeling in my toes as we walked up there. But it was great and uh, it's lovely to start the day with a lovely brisk walk out in the sunshine. One of my favourite actresses is um, Maggie Smith. She's an English actress and many years ago she played in the movie The Pride of Miss Jean Brodie. And I was looking on my favourite sayings before I came here to do this. And I just love this. She stars as the matriarch in Downton Abbey, which we love in Australia. And it's um, an English period um, saga. And she has the best one-liners. She's just amazing with her one-liners. And this was one of the things she said, and when I'm having a not-so-perfect day, I am reminded of it. She said um, to one of the characters, you are a woman with a brain and reasonable ability. Stop whining and go out and find something to do. I thought that was fabulous. So if you're not having a perfect day or a perfect night, Stop winding and go find something to do. I'm sure there's always someone that is worse off than we are. But he has this wonderful way of putting things out there in such a sarcastic way, which is quite often lost on the people she's talking to. So since I have talked to you last, I feel like I'm catching up with all my own old friends. I have been working very, very hard at the gym. I've managed to go over another plateau. Our yoga teacher has decided that we all need an hour of ab work, which includes planks, 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 and versions, planks, planks. So we have all worked out. She maintains that planks is better than 250 crunches. So any of you that are into abs, there you go. Planking, straight arm planks. And lowering yourself to the ground and coming up into a full cobra and then up into down dog. And repeating that numerous times will help us with our abs. Um, I have also been finishing off our back to basics. I had forgotten how many techniques we are covering from the very first thing you do when you get an embroidery machine and a very basic place and plot right to so many different techniques that we have developed along the way. We are actually going to be covering 28. So as well as your tools of the trade and every hint that I can throw in. So ladies, start getting ready. Those of you who have registered for our boot camp, speaking of boot camps, I promise not to be as harsh as, as my personal trainer who also had me working on my planks at the gym. And he worked me so hard for five minutes when I had finished, I got totally lightheaded and had to lie down. He told me that was because the blood had totally was diminishing from my brain. So um, I'm sure my son would have something to say about that, but I recovered quickly. 
So let's start our webinar. Christmas in July, it's near the end of July. This is the middle of our winter. So this is the only time, and yes, we've had unseasonable snow. But the one thing I'm sorry, I did forget to mention, I would like us all to think about the victims of that terrible crime of the downing of the Malaysian flight um, 17. I know that I think maybe there was one American if there was that, but Holland and Australia has lost so many people and the sad stories that have come out of that dreadful war-torn zone. And I have never felt so proud of a foreign minister as I did of our Julie Bishop who took what she did to the United Nations. It is a tragedy I don't think any of us will ever forget. Um, and I d would like us all to remember this dreadful tragedy as we go on with our lives. And whole families were lost and grandchildren were lost while the parents, the grandfather took them back and the parents stayed on in Italy. I don't think these people's lives will ever, ever be the same. So moving on to Christmas in July, please remember if you have any questions, just post them up to Simon. And oh, he reminded me that um, I have to give him a five second time frame in which to answer any of my questions or make comments. So while I um, read this out, we'll have a five second delay so Simon can say hello to everybody. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life of what we give. That came from the great statesman Winston Churchill. Simon? Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you um, enjoy today's webinar. I think the, um, the four projects that we're sharing with you today, I think you'll all really, really enjoy. Um, I think my favourite out of the bunch is probably the last one, which is called I Need a Little Christmas. Uh, mainly, um, not because it's an advent calendar, but I think the techniques that it uses um, just open up the possibilities of how you can put together a quilt, um, particularly for people who uh, may not um, be so fantastic at free motion quilting, because you can extrapolate the ideas to a full-size quilt, and I think it's just absolutely amazing uh, what you can do. And um, it was explored in detail in the Quilting Academy that we ran, not last year, I think, but the year before, I don't remember. Uh, and I think it's absolutely phenomenal what you can do. So I think whenever you, you are learning a new project, you always need to have in the back of your mind is how I can use what I'm doing in this small project to do something much larger. And I think once you see it, you'll all just be, wow, this is pretty pretty impressive. Um, we had a lot of people saying hello. on, um, So I hope I said hello to everyone. There were some people who were getting a little impatient that the slideshow hadn't begun. But uh, I think we're now um, happy, ready, and raring to go. Uh, so I will hand it back to Jenny. Um, this is an exciting slide for me because I can tell you we've got 25% off all of the embroidery CDs at JennyHaskins.com. As it shows, it excludes the download collection. So these are the collections that are um, only for those that are physical CDs. And uh, it's 25% off until the end of the month. Uh, so if you would like to buy them, um, I would suggest doing it sooner rather than later so you don't miss out um, on the discount. Um, but I hope you really enjoy uh, the four projects. And I know Mum will be happy to talk about this because it's got a picture of her little um, fourth grandchild and it's probably her first, <laughs> which is Miss Honey. She's actually my fifth grandchild, but she was the first. So if we count her, that's five. 
Robbie uh, and I love doing fun things and taking something and extrapolating something else from it. And I guess that's our creativity. You know, Christmas stockings are an age-old tradition. In fact, my sister and I were reminiscing how we remembered leaving pillowcases at the end of our bed for Santa to fill. How special we would have felt had we had our own personalised Christmas stocking with our photo on it for Santa. Robbie and I decided to do just that for my beautiful puppy, Miss Honey, who is nine, by the way, now and share this concept with everyone so they could create personalised Christmas stockings for those special little people in our lives. By the way, the look on Miss Honey's face says it all. Do I really have to do this? And that's her look when she's doing something and being very patient with me. What we have taken is we have taken quilting concept and I know the thing that is feared the most in all the years that I was teaching was free motion quilting. And absolutely today there is no need for fear of this because it is achievable by anyone if you can place some fabric in a hoop. Uh, you will also note on the stocking as we progress that it is not made all in one piece. Um, and we love using metallic thread, by the way, to quilt with, and particularly for Christmas. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Jenny Haskins metallic threads, you are missing out on a treat. They are perfect for machine embroidery. They're perfect for freehand quilting. They're, they're just perfect for everything because of the way they are constructed. And, they, and it is the way that they are, have layers of, of, what shall I say, products to each one. And very rarely do we ever get any shredding with these threads. So we are going to be doing panels with quilting in the reds and the greens and their various sizes. And you can see this and remember, all of these designs actually have a built-in stitch cutting line to the size that we needed these pieces. So you can see this round the edge. Now when Robbie and I did this, we just did the top fabric and the batting. But should you decide, and I do mention this at the end, that you would like a different coloured fabric, on the back of your hoop. This way you could make your placemats interchangeable for the season. So by adding a backing fabric to each one of these pieces that you are quilting, you will then be able to have your placemat double-sided. Again, I want to emphasize when you are cutting, and one other tip, and I say this every time, make sure you have a sharp blade in your rotary cutter, is place, I usually place my ruler so that it is exactly over the top of the stitch. Maybe the cutting line just extends a tiny fraction so that you are not cutting on the actual stitch line. And you have an absolute clean edge. Now we have cut some of our squares in half to be used in various places but because our quilting is so close to the edge and they're small stitches you have no problem with that. So you just have to follow the directions to cut out your five quilted red silk squares and then cut one red silk squares in half to make two three and three quarter times seven and a half inch quilted strips, six quilted green strips. And so the directions are very simple to follow. Now this is a tip that Robbie and I use on numerous occasions. And I have shared this before, but some of you may be new. This green lovely green stuff here, comes in multiple colours, 
Um, we usually use this as a shelf liner, so things don't fall over and stay in the one place. So you can see here that we have cut out a piece that can be hooped in whatever hoop size you want to use. Now I can just see here the outside hoop is around here. So you have to cut around one to three quarters of an inch inside your inner hoop and if I go to the next one you will see how we have cut that. Um, and when you use that on the top of all the layers of your fabric and make sure it is free of any basting stitches you use, you will find that your fabric will stay securely in the frame. We of course use a basting stitch when we're layering fabric um, as the first colour for all our layers of fabric to secure them together in the hoop. This is a great little accessory that you should have on hand, especially if you are using slippery fabric. The reason why I shared that with you is because we are using Cutaway Magic and Nylon Organza hoop together to embroider this gorgeous little frame. Now you will notice how dense and gorgeous the metallic thread is in this frame. It's a beautiful frame and the stitching is just glorious when done with metallic thread. And for anyone that was struggling, we felt the grip it frame that you can make yourself is handy to have. We also use Cutaway Magic and Nylon Exanza Hoop together to do our gold metallic um, lame bow. Now this is all done with embroidered decoupage because we're going to heat cut these out be when they're finished to, um, so that we can apply them wherever we want to onto the onto the oh stocking the word eludes me right then so you can see here and I need to explain this this is not directly onto the cutting board as you can see straight through our glass tile so do not heat cut out onto your cutting board or you will melt your cutting board so I do have a glass tile under here while everything is still in the hoop, you then heat cut out your design over a glass frame by quickly tracing round the edge of our design. Now the stocking is, once we the sections are all cut to finish size, each section is butted up to the other. Raw fabric edges aligned in parallel, pinned together with pins horizontal to the vertical seams and then sewn together over the pins with a zigzag. I can almost say this in my sleep. I have explained it so many times. And while we are looking at the slide, look how beautiful the McTavishing is in these blocks done with the um, metallic thread. So once we have done a zigzag over our um, pins, we have butted the two pieces together, then you will do a decorative stitch, again using gold metallic thread, piecing them all together, piecing them all together. So. You can see here that I have laid out the stocking. This is the toe, which will be rounded. And this is the top of the boot. And you see the white fabric on the back of the quilting, by the way, um, which will be, this is the return, the turn back on the top of the boot. So we don't want the same green because we're going to turn it back. So we have the green on the other side. So it's a very simple layout and you will do two of them because the boot is joined together with a bias 
tape. So I think the picture is very self-explanatory. I'm going to interrupt for one second. Yeah, go for it. I've got to shut the door, Simon. Yes, go um, on. Someone asked what, what size hoops for these designs. So I, I believe the quilting designs come in two sizes. So if, if, if when Jenny goes, if I could get Jenny to go back to the previous slide, you saw the different sections of the boot. There's the big square, which is for a 200 by 200 hoop or an 8 inch by 8 inch hoop. And then the other side is, um, is smaller than that. If you don't have a 200 by 200 hoop, you would simply stitch the smaller width design several times. So it'd be two or three for each of those squares. And then you just join it exactly the same way with the Jenny join technique. That's something I love about this technique is that you can use it on multiple size hoops. It doesn't matter if you just have an extra row of decorative stitching and it's not going to change um, how, how the quilt looks. You'd probably actually get more of a regular pattern if you kept that same width that you've got the green and the cream and you just did, I can't tell exactly, say maybe eight strips of the red and you just have this striped effect to what you're working on. So um, the size of the hoop in, in some regards is completely irrelevant. Uh, so if you didn't have a 200 by 200 or 8, eight inch by 8 inch hoop, you could just repeat the smaller design and stitch multiples of those to create the size that you wanted. Conversely, if you wanted to make a larger size Christmas stocking, you would just stitch more of the design to create a larger piece of quilted fabric. So I hope that makes sense. Yes, that is excellent, Simon, and I'm glad you brought up that point. And remember, sometimes you may have to stitch your design on the diagonal in your hoop to take a maximum benefit to get the largest size design that you can in your hoop. And again, you can see here uh, another thing you could, um, there are so many things that I see so many possibilities with all of these. And when I do the I need a little Christmas, um, I will share another idea I've had for, for these stockings. So you can see here we are up the top of our stocking. Da 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 da. And remember, we will not be joining our um, return on the top of the boot or the cuff of the boot. I just went back one. The cuff of our boot on the same side. So we will be stitching on the right side of the return. You can see this is the back of the stitching here. So the gold stitching is on the other side. Now we are making um, the straight lines for us to add our ribbons and braids. I love working with decorative ribbons and braids and then creating my own designs. Those of you who know me from way back know that I love working with decorative stitches. So in this next um, slide, you will notice that we have lined up, that's gold ribbon, and these are our green ribbons. And that was the plain, plain gold ribbon down the center. The green ribbon did have a little gold star in it, at one stage, I did promotions for Opera ribbons, and I had these ribbons in my little stash. But should you want an effect like that, there are many stitches that you could sew down the center of your ribbon as well. Um, the ribbons are glued in place, so allow the glue to dry. If you wanted to stitch them, that's fine, but we will be doing plenty of stitching to hold them down. So just glue them in, in place. Do not do your decorative stitching till your glue is dried. And, I, and don't forget to put a tear away behind the stitching to ensure easy and clean feeding 
of the fabric. You can see here we've done the return on the top of the boot. Use the open toe foot metallic thread in the needle and tear away magic at the back of the stitching to sew decorative stitching on each side of the green ribbon and down the center of the gold ribbon. Re repeat the steps for the back of the stocking. Make sure that my little tip would be, and I don't think Robbie and I did this, I would do a little seam maybe across the red section. I'll go back on the side here. So you could seam just that section of the boot with a zigzag and then you could take your ribbon straight across. It would save you having to match up on both sides. Hopefully your lines are straight and your sewing is straight. And don't forget to have a lovely open-toed foot. Now our next slide shows us the finished boot. Now for those of you who are wondering how to um, um, just for the heel and the toe, we just used a plate for around there and we just made a little curve pattern for around there. It's easy to do a toe and heel and you can use a section of a plate. Just mark, I'll just get We've got the lines here, so you have the plate lined up in the same position on each side. There, we have a line here. And here you just measure out from the corner the same place, out there the same distance, and then make sure that the plate touches in exactly the same places before you um, um, draw around it. Now, use the photo as a guide to position and place the apricot bow sections on the stocking toe, front of stocking. And then use Invisa sheer thread in the needle and either a straight stitch, a pin stitch or a zigzag stitch and the open toe foot to sew close to the edge of the bow loops and tails to secure the edges down. Now, as far as our little frame is concerned, Concerned. This is the back of our frame and we've just gathered up, I again had this in my stash, some gold ribbon and gathered it to fit the edge of the frame and then we just glued it onto the back of the frame and we always secure it with a clothespin or peg. You then position the frame over the bow on the front of the stocking, leaving a section at the top here, across here. Open to slide your picture in and remember, do not on the back of it when you glue it in place, only take the glue to the edge. So it's the uh, um, where the gathering sits on the ribbon, otherwise you won't be able, you'll glue it all down and won't be able to fit um, your picture in there. Place the photo inside the gold frame and then use the rhinestone setter to add a little bit of sparkle. You'll all be surprised that um, I'm saying add a sparkle to it. Poor honey. Okay, now we are finishing off our boot. On the right side of each stocking piece, turn the top lining side of the fabric down two inches so as to form a cuff at the top of the boot. Pin and then stitch the cuff in place down each side of the stocking close to the raw fabric edges. So you're stitching on each side that are and oh I went way too far then. Too quick. And I have a very touchy little mouse this morning and down this side and sew them together. Now we are going to put the two pieces together. So we are going to, I would just stitch 
of them both together, close to edge. And then we've used the satin binding, which is a bias binding. And we stitched it to the front of the boot, turned it, of course, clipped around the curves, turned it to the wrong side of the sock stocking, pressing it down, and then we just glued it in place. Now it is really easy to make your own tassels, fringe and twisted cord using Jenny's Magic Tassel and Fringe Maker, which is this here. Um, being able to make your own embellishments means it's easy to exactly match your trims. So you can make tassels and trims. So what you need to do for our um, fringe at the top is to have a base piece of ribbon over the opening in the middle of the tassel fringe maker and we've just glued it down at each end. Then we took several different types of braids and cords and the red is eyelash um, knitting yarn and wound it over the open space in the centre of the tassel maker and then we just zigzag down the centre so that the um, cords and as you can see we put green ones and gold ones and red ones are adhered to the ribbon um, down the centre. To release, you can see these are zigzagged down the middle and these are wound around. To release each section of making the fringing, you just cut it down each side, move it up on the, tass on the tassel fringe maker and just keep repeating this. You can have a continuous piece of fringe um, ribbon. So here's this piece of ribbon. Once we've cut it, we just move that piece of ribbon to the end of the opening, stick it down at, at this end again and repeat it and keep moving it up until you have a 16 inch length of fringe. You can see here that the fringe is glued to the top of the stocking and we've just put pegs on it to hold it in place. We also made two one yard lengths of twisted cord using the same yard as the fringe. You will need approximately three yard, one of each yarn twisted together. There are many ways to twist a cord. I prefer to use the bobbin technique to do a twisted cord. And uh, I have demonstrated that numerous times on videos and step by steps. Uh, it's very simple if you have another way to twist a cord or you just want to purchase a cord to hang the tassels from the end of the bow. What a festive Christmas stocking. Light dances on it, glistening and sparkling no matter what way it turns. What a glorious decoration or gift. And what makes this stocking so special is that it is personalised with a photo of the special someone in your life. Who could want more? I know Miss Honey just loves hers, especially when it's filled with doggy treats at Christmas. Also, another thing you may like to do before you piece the stocking is put your grandchild's name on the stocking, that underneath the picture or above the picture, that or at the top of the stocking. That would make it even more personalised. Now moving on, just reminding you of our discount on all our embroidery CDs. And I love this. <laughs> I think this is so gorgeous. I need all the help I can get these days. Beauty comes from having my own style, living my own way and knowing my own mind. Those of you who know me better than others, I think this is just about me completely and I love the painting and of course it's purple and pink. Now the next segment
section we are going to deal with is our placemat. Again, it is made up of quilted sections. So you would need to make up the number of sections that is required to make the size of the placemat. So if you have a smaller hoop, again, you would use the smaller size pieces and piece them together to form the correct size. And again, this gives you a lot more creativity. Nothing says Christmas like a festive table, setting that reflects the holiday season. This delightfully cheery placemat is, is made is easy to make, pretty to look at, and practical all in one, per one perfect to decorate your holiday table setting. Change the colors and fabrics and you have a stunning placemat for everyday use, celebratory occasions, even holiday resorts and creative possibilities are endless. Before I go any further, Robbie and I did not have a reversible placemat. But I'm thinking that particularly our American audience have um, Thanksgiving coming up. And you could do Thanksgiving um, colors on the back of your placemat. And you could do Christmas colors on the front of your placemat. Just a thought. The finish size of our placemat is 12 and a half inches by 17 inches. And this gives you the close-up that you're going to need four corners. You're going to need two ends, four side pieces, and three pieces across the center. And you can see here that we have used the little circle um, quilting design and the McTavishing. And um, you are, again, we use gold metallic thread. You can see here that we actually used one of our larger hoops and embroidered our sections together. You can do that if you have a larger hoop. You can do one section at a time across or diagonally in your hoop to get the required number of sections and colors you will need. You can see that we've done our three circle designs. All these pieces, by the way, again, they have Simon's wonderful built-in stitch cutting lines, which means every piece is cut perfectly straight and accurately, no need to measure. And there was one other thing I was going to say then, and it's to oh, just remember every piece that you cut is cut to finished size. There is no quarter inch seam allowance necessary nor allowed for. Again, we are piecing each section exactly the same way as we did in the boot. So you will lay out your placemat so the, and cut your sections to the sizes that are given in the directions. You, you will notice that we are cutting these shorter because we need to piece those to get the required length that we needed. So once we have got all our quilting pieces done and all the sections pieced with the Jenny join, we are doing with an embroidered decoupage applique for each corner. So you can see we have used our grip it frame, sandwich the nylon organza between two layers of dissolve magic and then hoop all your layered fabrics together to embroider our flower, applique flower designs. So remember we have actually backed our flower applique fabric insert with sheer magic. We always put sheer magic on the back of 90% of all our work and putting the quilt magic at the back for your applique just gives that lovely puffed up effect 
that you can see here for your applique. Complete the flower embroidery using, we used a red metallic thread for the applique stitching, gold metallic thread for the centres of the flowers. You know how to heat cut out your flowers and wash the soluble stabiliser from your embroidery and lay flat to dry. You can see here that we are using once again the Jenny Join to piece our placemat. And again, we're using a decorative stitch with Tear Away Magic at the back of the decorative stitching. Now, if you were doing a double-sided placemat, you would put gold metallic thread in your bobbin as well as your needle when you are piecing. Um, I would also, of course, use it in the bobbin for our quilting design so you get the same lovely metallic thread on both sides. Here is our placemat laid out. You can see you have detailed directions on how to lay it out and what pieces go where. Here is our piece placemat with our decorative stitching. I'm just waiting for you to catch up. It is really beautiful with the gold metallic thread. Now you get to place your uh, embroidery on the corners. Now, if you are doing a double-sided one, I would put my embroidery on the front first. And we actually used a little glue to hold it in place before we stitched it. And then you use and there's a sheer thread and the needle and a fine thread in the bobbin to attach the embroidered decoupage corner designs to the placemat. Now, I would put um, either a sheer thread in the bobbin or I would use a red thread in the bobbin if you're doing it double-sided. So. We actually, the, the other thing you could do, you could do your placemat in two sections if you don't want to worry about exactly matching up your design or having a different design um, on the other side. So you'd complete your actual um, placemat but make two sections, but them together you could stitch in the ditch between each design, but I'd put my embroidery designs on first. It just would make it easier for you. What we actually did was we put Quilt Magic Plus, which is a double-sided fusible batting, on our backing fabric and then fused it to the back of our placemat squared up our placemat, as you can see, we are doing here, two finished sides. We rounded the corner using a little tool we found um, in all the tools I've got. Again, you can use a plate. Cut that with a lovely large pair of Kai cutting shears, which are our favourite scissors. And then we just put our binding around the edge, the same as the boot, remembering to clip into our corners. And we glued it on the other side, turned it to the other side and glued it in place. We then added a little sparkle by adding some um, gorgeous heat set crystals to the centres of our flowers. And as I said at the beginning, you may choose to make this placement double-sided by simply repeating the front of the placement in a different colour story and then putting the two placements together wrong sides facing and binding the outside edge. Um, you may also choose to make three placements. 
do not round the corners and piece them together to make a table runner. This can also be double sided. So you have so many creative ideas you can do by simply changing colour stories and the way you piece things together. Go for it. You have plenty to be creative with now. And don't forget, I would love to see pictures of what you do with these things that we go through step by step on the webinars. And it reminds me of the fun things that Robbie and I have done. I think we can all say this. You either like me or you don't. It took me 20 some years to learn how to love myself. I don't have that kind of time to convince somebody else. Just remember that. I think at our age we have earned the right to say if you don't like me, sorry, doing the best I can. Okay. Our next little thing is our festive pillow and it's nice to have some of these to throw around at Christmas time. You can make them as large or as small as you like. And again, we are using designs from a place in the sun and it's just giving you a twist. This is actually a block made into a pillow from a place in the sun. All our quilting is done with metallic thread and we have padded our applique as we did for the placemat. Gorgeous and sparkling. And it's amazing what different colour makes to a design. With Robbie and Jenny choosing vibrant red and green silk along with old gold silk, all of which is quilted and embroidered using metallic threads. The results are not only eye-catching but also catches the sparkle and pizzazz that reflects the Christmas spirit. And you can see the way the light is dancing off the centre of our flower here, how that you can see that, and again with the leaves in all places, the padding makes such a difference to any applique. No absolute fabric requirements are given as it depends on the size of your hoop. Please refer to the three free videos on our website for you to view. These videos give detailed directions on how to make quilt blocks, which is what the festive petite pillow is based on. So remember we do have these videos on our website and they do guide you through step by step with many different techniques. It's amazing the number of emails I get from people who are asking me questions that I refer back to the videos. And I do get lovely emails sent back saying, thank you so much. I now feel confident and comfortable to go ahead and do the project I'm looking at. So I would say just about every technique that we have is covered, well most of them, on those videos. So if you're thinking about a technique, then refer back and view the videos. Life isn't meant to be easy, it's meant to be lived. Sometimes happy, other times rough. But with every up and down, you learn lessons that make you strong. I look at life as sit up. And every sit-up I do, depending on how many I do, they get harder as I do them, but each time I can do more before they get hard. Yes, be strong. Okay, this romantic advent, color, uh, um, color, um, advent calendar incorporates Jenny's quilt Magic quilting in the hoop with cutting lines, so no measuring is required. The Jenny join for flat seams and Jenny's embroidered decoupage technique. This is so easy to do. 
and Simon had been at Robin and I, who don't work in red and greens that easy, um, they're not our colours, to do the red and greens. You can see all the techniques that I have covered in this webinar. We have quilting in the hoop, we have piecing with the jenny join, we have embroidered decoupage little heart pockets. It is really a very, very easy project. And remember, if you're interested in it, and this technique, by the way, can be made into so many other things. You've, you've just got to open your mind. Um, you've got your quilting. The hearts can be done in different colours. Your background of the tree can be different colours. I see so many ideas that um, you could have them as a little placemat with the little hearts as your decoration. You could have them for your Christmas, make it into a placemat using this technique. And the placemats could have a little Christmas treat and the hearts being little pockets on the side of your placemats. There are so many different ideas. You can basically see this layout diagram. It is such an easy thing to do. And it is just made up of your quilting in the hoop squares laid out as per the diagram. I made this all without any of the helps we have before machine embroidery was on the market many years ago and the hearts were all appliqued by hand, the quilting was done by hand and each little block was pieced. Trust me, it took a lot longer. You can see here that we have Iron Sheer Magic plus to the back of our silk, which we always do. Then we've got our backing and our backing fabric, which is all layered in the hoop, to do, and to do our quilting as we have done previously. There are 24 hearts that are needed for the advent calendar in each heart has a number from 1 to 24 embroidered in the centre of it. And you will need 13 green hearts, 11 red hearts, or vice versa, depending on which colour heart you choose to start at the top of the tree. The applique hearts are embroidered over layered cream, white, nylon organza, quilt magic and cutaway magic. Layered organza, quilt magic and cutaway magic, and then hoop all layers together. Um, the hearts and numbers are all embroidered using my gold metallic thread. We decided that the sparkle organza needed to be laid over a green silk and then we stitched out to emphasise that some are green and some are red. And you can see here we've done the applique hearts. And notice our little easy, easy snips that we've cut around the hearts. We've then come embroidered the outside edge to applique it. And then we have done our numbers in the centre and very quickly heat cut out around each heart. Notice how clean our lines are and how easy it is to cut out the heart. Again, we did this for the star at the top of the tree and we made it a double-sided heart by putting the gold lame fabric at a part star at the back of the star. Now, I'm going to take a little breather so it's double-sided. Simon, are there any questions or have I missed anything? Um, answering the questions as we go along, we had a couple of questions about metallic thread and we've had a couple of questions about the sizes of the designs and we've had a couple of questions about silk. So I'm hoping that I'm getting to all of these questions. Are we talking about the size of these design sites? Sorry? Are we talking about the size of the designs on I Need a Little Christmas? Um, I haven't yet, and I haven't had questions about that yet. So um, you can okay. Well, they're 
I, I would say, and I can't remember um, exactly what size, but they would all, all the designs on here would fit in a four inch square hoop. They're all small designs. So if you have a small hoop and that's all you can embroider with, then these are fine. If you have a larger hoop, combine as many of the designs as you can in the larger hoop. So we need 32 3 inch squares cut to finished size. You can then lay out your Christmas tree as per the diagram that comes with the directions. Now to get the edge of the Christmas tree, we have just cut the three inch squares in half. So we need to cut, we need to make 12 triangles. So we need six cut on the diagonal in one direction. Lay it out like this and then piece the Christmas tree with the Jenny join in sections. So this is your top row which is there and then one square goes on the top. So you start with one square and then the next one has one square with a triangle on each side and the next one has two squares with a triangle on each side etc etc and then you have the tree trunk made up of four squares and again they are all pieced with the Jenny join into rows with the decorative stitching and then we're going to piece the rows and you will notice that these are done as bricks. So your squares are pieced and laid out as brickwood so each seam will be in the centre of the square that is above it. So you can see here that we are doing these together with the Jenny join with the pins horizontally to the vertical seam line. It's all very easy and piece your complete Christmas tree including the trunk. Then the easy part now to get the straight sides of your Christmas tree is to find the center of your top square which should be one and a half inches and mark it and then lay your quilting ruler down the side and mark a line and then cut it and you do that down each side because it's not a half a triangle and it's not a quarter of a triangle that makes it down the side but that completes our tree. So you just line it up down the edge and down each side there and cut away the little triangles. Then lay out your hearts and remember they're pockets and we are going to glue one centred in each one of the complete squares and remember they're pockets so you are only going to glue around here. Just a little pad of glue on the back of the heart over the applique stitching and then glue it centered in each square. And you can see here that you have each square um, and we have uh, with the hearts in it you can they are then stitched around the edge um, with either a small stipple stitch or with Invisa Shear Thread or you can do a little pin stitch so that the straight edge of the stitch swings over and I'll demonstrate on here we did it with a little stipple stitch around the edge but if you're using a, um, a um, pin stitch the straight edge of it follows the edge of the heart and swings and the swing swings over the edge of the applique stitching. Um, we then added a nice piece of metallic, oh god it's, I've, I've forgotten um, the name of it, um, 
I'll think of it in a minute. You can see it. You're all saying it for me. So we've made a piping and added a narrow piping in gold metallic or a purchased one. So we pop that in down the edge first and then we put our, our binding over the top of that and then we turned our binding to the back of the tree and glued it in place. You may choose to decorate the hearts with small bows, Christmas charms. We also found discarded brooches that we pinned to the star and scattered over the hearts and tree. Fill the pockets with small Christmas goodies. You can have chocolates, you can have a small gift and then allow your favourite child, ages no limit, to take a goodie out of the heart pockets on the 24 days of Christmas. This makes a perfectly romantic Christmas Advent calendar. Um, also remember to pop your star on the top of the tree. Remember we made it double sided so it will be the same on both sides and we added a hanging at the back of the star. Have I got any questions Simon? Um, they're just looking for online sellers in the United States, Canada and the UK so I'm just updating people on that and um, we just had a lovely endorsement of the metallic thread uh, saying that it sews like butter and it really does, it's, it's phenomenal. There was a sceptic out there who I don't think believed that you could use it in your bobbin thread as well as through the needle and I was very happy that somebody uh, typed in that they use it and don't have any problems at all. So if you are afraid of metallic, um, give Jenny Thread a try because it simply is wonderful and I think this project really highlighted that you can use metallic thread for pretty much anything from embroidery for quilting, uh, in the bobbin, uh, however you want and you get beautiful results. Simon, I have forgotten. I know it has, it has a, uh, it's got a polyester cord for the centre of the thread. It is bound with uh, metallic fibre and it is coated with mylar, which pro it actually, the, the reason why a metallic thread shreds is that with the friction passing through the needle, it expands. So, but the mylar prevents it. It actually lubricates the thread as it passes through the eye of the needle. I never use a metallic needle. There is no need to use a metallic needle with my metallic threads. I have a friend who has done a lot of my um, long arm quilting and she said she just could not believe how beautifully the metallic thread quilted. Um, one year we went round to all the um, large um, um, freehand embroidery machines that were at the Houston show and gave them all a spool of my metallic thread to use on the stand. And without exception, everyone came back and said, we have never quilted with such an amazing metallic thread. We don't think like I used to when I first started using metallic thread doing an embroidery design or or quilting or a decorative stitch. Oh, I wonder how many thread shreds we'll have. I wonder how many times the thread will break. You, it just takes the fear factor out of it. And if I stand by this thread unequivocally, it is the best metallic thread on the market. Um, by the way, if I have uh, anyone online who has registered for our boot camp, um, and I know people have been asking me where will they get the stabiliser products that are needed. I think Simon put um, Debbie Reese's online store up online. Did you sign? Yes, I did. Yes, um, Debbie has all, all the products including the metallic threads and I will be telling my boot camp people that she will be having a special offer for you so that you'll get a nice discount 
of all the products you're going to need um, for the boot camp. So um, uh, Debbie ships very promptly, so you will have no problem getting the products that you need and particularly the metallic threads. I don't know if Simon has. No, he doesn't have one more saying. I have one more saying for you, which I'll read to you. You'll never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. You know, I'm sure you say, oh, Jenny comes forth with all these things. I wonder if she puts them into her life. I had made a decision quite a while ago that I had been getting up at 6 o'clock or earlier for like nine-tenths of my life, so I wasn't doing it anymore, and so I can attest to that. But more recently, I have decided it's time for me to get my day organised earlier. And last year when I went into the hospital to see Cy um, numerous times a week, that I would have to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning at, so that I could leave when the traffic wasn't bad to do my little trek into the city and I'd get a good parking spot. So I was thinking if I could do it then, I could do it now. And I have changed my routine and I have my alarm goes off at 6 and I'm getting up at 8 in the morning. But I do find that I now am making this a habit. I'm not quite up to my 21 days, but I am getting there and it really has started my day off. So I do try to make changes to my life. Remember, the only difference between the living and the dead is that the living change and have the opportunity to make changes. So Sai, do we have any other questions? No, the questions were mainly just looking for um, for locations where they can buy the products and we're handling that. So I think we're all good. Um, on that note, Sai, um, I believe, now I'm not really sure of this, but I believe Debbie may have some of the holly organza still. I'm not sure. I know that she did get some, um, but uh, just try her. I'm not. I'm not sure. And she tells me that she ships twice a week, so there'll be no trouble for you getting your supplies. I would like to thank you all for attending our webinar. Um, if there is any subject you would like me to cover in these or any project you'd like me to cover in these. Um, I don't know if Simon will have this ready for the next webinar, so I'll throw this out to him. Um, that I have, and I haven't, we haven't got the picture here, but I have uh, an eight block techniques quilt that Simon's been nagging me from the beginning of the year to write the directions for. I did put it up on Jenny Haskins Designs 1 Facebook page. Um, hopefully this will be ready for our next webinar or do you have something else in mind, Simon? Hello? Did you hear my question? No, I didn't, sorry. I was asking, do you think you will have my techniques quilt, the little pink and green one, um, ready for our next webinar? Uh, probably not the next one, but the one after that. So that's not the August one, but September the September one. one. Yes, the yes. September I one. Think. Somebody just asked about how they can get the project. So the first three that you saw, which was the Christmas stocking, I need the place mat, and and no, and the petite pillow, are those three projects are available as a download from our website called Christmas Festive Trio. So those three come as a download. The last project, which is called I Need a Little Christmas, is a CD and it is the advent calendar. So there's two different products there. One is the Christmas Festive Trio, and that's the download. 
and the, the last one, I Need a Little Christmas as a CD. Uh, and they both can be purchased from our website. The festive trio is exclusively from JennyHaskins.com and I Need a Little Christmas is available. You can order that from um, any Jenny Haskins dealer. Um, the CDs are discounted from our website only, so that's JennyHaskins.com. Um, uh, I believe the download is $20 or $22 if you're in Australia. And the I Need All of Christmas, I believe, is $50 and you get your 25% discount, so that brings it to 30 something. Um, and that's where you can get all of the products. Okay, um, those of you will see, I'm, I have just flashed back. I'm trying to get back to the beginning of the PowerPoint. So you, for those of you, can see that um, these are the pictures that you'll be looking for. And with the 25% off, I think this is this the picture, Simon, that the um, Festa Trio it would the picture that's on the website. It's the so people in the back of that um, image. It shows the three. Yes. Projects. Yes. So this is. This is the picture you would look for if you are looking for the festive trio. So thank you again for attending. Um, we welcome your um, constructive ideas. We try to take them on board. If there is anything that you perhaps did not totally understand, I do suggest you go and look at the video, I Need a Little Christmas and that covers in detail all the techniques that are in our festive trio. So until next time, I wish you all only rainbows and it's goodbye from me. And uh, See you from me. I'm just about to jump on a plane and spend a week at the beach. So my first holiday since getting cancer last year, so I cannot wait. And on that note, I'm going to make my mother zip her mouth because she doesn't want me to go, but I am. So I will see you when I get back. Bye. Bye.